Hey folks, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Today's episode, I'll warn you right up front, I am probably kicking a beehive. I know I've said that before, and I, I'll say it again. We, what I am potentially doing here is walking up to one of the most controversial and flashpoint games we've had in the past two or three years, and I'm going to be talking about it. Now, that game I'm going to be talking about is the new version of Vampire the Masquerade, 5th edition. This was officially released this year at Gen Con 2018, and I got my copy recently, and I want to talk about it. For those of us who've been around a while, before there were social justice warriors, there was political correctness. Same thing, different phrase. That's all it was. This game has engendered a lot of angst, concern, rage, dyspepsia, all that stuff dealing with the nature of the game. So I'm going to kind of come right up front here, folks. It's not that bad. Reading through this, this what this game emphasizes is it kind of goes back to the roots, more on that in a second, of Vampire the Masquerade, which is you are playing a monster. I think this version embraces the monster more than, <laughs> get it, embraces, the monster more than some of the earlier versions did. About the time of Vampire Revised and Werewolf Revised and all that, as much as they didn't want to admit it, they were kind of getting you to play supernatural superheroes. It was really my first exposure to urban fantasy. Now, there are games that do urban fantasy better than Vampire the Masquerade because they're built that way. This, as I mentioned, really takes hold of the idea of you're a monster and runs with it. All right. I like to think of Old World of Darkness and New World of Darkness as like a relationships. I'll get to, give me a sec to, to build this for you. Just give me a moment here. When they went from the Old World of Darkness, when they destroyed everything with Gehenna, Ascension, Apocalypse, etc., they relaunched the New World of Darkness. I respect what they did with the New World of Darkness. Truly, I do. But it lost a lot of its flavor. So hear me out on this. The old world of darkness was the boyfriend or girlfriend you dated that wasn't really the best for you. You know, it wasn't an abusive relationship, but it wasn't always nice. And it was weird and occasionally said things that shouldn't that offended some of your more pearl-clutching friends. Gypsies! Oh. But by God, it, they were weird and they were wacky and they were fun. And sometimes they got a little gothy and dark if you were vampires. Sometimes they liked to slap you around a little bit if you were a werewolf. Sometimes you didn't understand what the hell they were talking about if it was mage. But you know what? You look back on that and you're like, man, that was a weird and wacky time in my life. I hope my wife forgives me for this description. I really do. Sorry, honey. And then New World of Darkness came along and it was a much more healthy relationship. Things were more balanced. They made more sense. There was less off-the-wall wackiness. And it was better overall. But you know what? Sometimes you just look back in fond reminiscence of, man, that was a wacky and weird thing I used to do. Well, the weird girlfriend or boyfriend is back, ladies and gentlemen. Now, they've cleaned up their act a little bit. They're, they're a little bit calmer. You know, maybe they spent some time in rehab. Maybe they did a nickel for armed robbery. Maybe any number of things have happened. But they've calmed down, and this is what you've got here. Okay, enough with the vague analogs. What happens here? You're back to the original setting of Vampire. You've got the core, clan, the core clans of the Camarilla, try saying that when you're drunk, that we've had before, Bruja, Gangrel, Malkavian, Toreador, Tremere, Nosferatu, you know, everything we're used to, they're, they're in here. A lot of it is very recognizable as well. They've done a few things. They've gone back a bit further on some things. And I sort of like this. They got rid of Dimension and they, got, they bring Domination back for the Malkavians. They have really changed the way the disciplines work insofar as each level of discipline, you've now got a couple of things. 
that you can do, especially at the lower levels. And they're not quite so, holy crap, he's got three levels of celerity, he just won this fight. It's not quite as much that as it used to be. There's still, there's still some unbalance there, I'm not going to lie to you. And that's one of the things that was inherent in the, in the book to begin with. So, where this has gotten into a lot of trouble is they are taking real-world issues and they're dealing with it through the lens of the vampires. For some reason, the, the powers that be in the Camarilla have fled. The Anarchs are now have a lot more control in the United States than they used to. The elders of the Camarilla are off fighting the elders of the Sabbat someplace else. It's implied it's in the Middle East, but that's about all we really know. And welcome, you know, say goodbye to the old boss, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. We still have political backbiting. We still have viciousness. Recently, there's been a book pulled from production because of some supposed callousness on how it was treating some very violent, very unpleasant real world issues. I never saw the book. I can't really judge it because of that. I will tell you that the theme of this book is you are playing monsters. And it, and it really rolls around in it, truthfully, in this, in this book, because one of the things that happens is every day you awaken, you have to roll a rouse check. And there are special dice you put in your pool every time you use your blood to see if you lose your ever-loving, night-embracing, immoral crap and have to go crazy and eat somebody. Folks, you're a vampire. Now, I love Buffy, and I love Angel, and I love Dresden as much as anybody else. But those never really emphasized the need for the vampire to feed. It was always, they needed to survive, it was recreational for some of the more unpleasant ones, etc. But they've never really made that a point. And here they do. You're playing a vampire. It's still very much the system that we're used to. You roll a pool of 10-sided dice, sixes and aboves are successes. You're divided up amongst nine attributes and a wide variety of skills, etc. A lot of it's very recognizable. And honestly, I don't see the big deal. Now, I might get in trouble for this. We might lose some viewers. You might start screaming, well, why do we care what you think? Well. You came to watch the show. I mean, you kind of care what I think a little bit. So, at any rate, if you're into van if you're into vampire, if you have very fond remembrances of the Camarilla, if you have very fond, if you just think, man, what generation would that vampire be away from Cain? Folks, this is the book for you. It's your crazy girlfriend back again, and. I don't know. I hope my wife never sees this episode because I'm in deep shit if she does. But it was very fun reading this and remembering that phase when I played this a lot and was really obsessed with it. And now I'm 47. I'm married with four kids. I've got a job, mortgage, car payments. I'm fat. You know, I'll never go back to it again. But every once in a while, it was like, man, grad school was awesome. For Game Geeks, I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Good day and good gaming.